Welcome to this new video about UK immigration changes that are coming in spring 2024. Hello, everyone. We will be discussing how the new immigration changes might be impacting uh, future immigrants to the UK and especially international students. With me, I have uh, Yash Dubal, UK immigration lawyer and a managing director at A. Y and G solicitors. He has been uh, helping me throughout these years to deliver the most recent information and most accurate information about UK immigration. Um, Yash uh, has grown a huge team of immigration experts in the UK, and you can follow him on uh, LinkedIn to make sure you stay updated with immigration uh, updates. Hi, Yash. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Valeria. Thank you for inviting, and I'm I'm very happy to be here with you and hello um, to the audience. Everyone has been shocked about recent updates that the government has um, released in, uh, in December 2023, that where we're filming this uh, video. Uh, could you just give us an update in your own words? What are the main uh, immigration changes we should be expecting in spring 2024 in the UK? Absolutely. Um, so the changes says five point plan by the immigration minister. I'm sure there are a lot of videos updates online. It's uh, very uh, shocking, of course, uh, to everyone, not just to us as an immigration lawyer. Um, so, of course, number one is the salary change for the skilled worker visa from twenty six thousand two hundred to thirty eight thousand seven hundred. Biggest change. The number two is the social care workers cannot bring the dependents. Um, it's number two. Number three is increase of uh, spouse visa salary threshold to 38,700. Uh, and then potential review of uh, graduate group visa and the shortage occupation list. Um, so these are the key changes um, I do recall on top of my head. Uh, potential changes that will come into place. Now, focusing on the audience, we have students. Um, graduate route uh, would potentially be changed. Uh, government has uh, requested a Migration Advisory Committee, MAC, uh, who is a think tank and probably an independent body to review uh, the immigration route, and they may come up with their own recommendation as to what would be the, uh, the ideal way forward. Um, the idea is to control immigration. Um, it's a very hot political topic. And as we all know, the immigration, the, the election is on the way. Uh, so the, uh, the Tory government is, of course, uh, trying to, to see how they can you know, uh, use this um, topic, which is a very hot topic, uh, by trying to, you know, um, I'm just trying to find out right word, trying to use yeah. this. Uh, a political uh, tool, you know, it's a weapon to see if they can win more votes. Um, having said that, look, immigration has been great. I've been in this business for last 15 years. I have seen many governments, Labour and Conservative, and of course, uh, Conservative um, and Lib Dem collision as well. Uh, and, and, and the political party, I mean, immigration ministers, they try and come and put their mark on this immigration, say, oh, I'll just do something which history will remember me for. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we got to be pragmatic about it. Uh, that, that's my personal and professional views. Like, what is right for the country? What is not right for the country? Students coming from abroad, they contribute around 4 billion. I've read a statistic somewhere by paying the international student fees and, of course, the economic benefit they bring to the UK. But having said, I mean, this is uh, my opinion, but if we just focus on the potential change, yes, the graduate route visa likely to change how, what, and when. There is no specific announcement as we speak in December 2023, Valeria. So it's it's a, there is a sort of uncertainty. It's highly unlikely to affect those who are already on a student visa as of now as we speak, but it will likely to affect uh, uh, who might join uh, next year or later part of the next year post announcement of the potential change, which nobody knows. But of course, uh, there are highly likely chance the, the government will review the graduate route visa, um, either even, uh, you know, just uh, a stop completely. We don't know yet. But yeah, there, there is a likely chance 
uh, they might scrap it or change it. Mm. Yes, thank you so much for sharing your view, Yash. I completely agree with you. I think that we have to separate politics from economics and realize that uh, at the end of the day, UK is still a very uh, rational country and that values skilled immigration, values international students and not going to make any radical changes. I've also been in UK, uh, an immigrant in UK from 2011 and I've been through... Uh, PSW being there, then it's been cancelled, uh, then it's been introduced again. But still, I see a lot of skilled, talented people coming and building their career, building their future in the UK. And I don't think this is going to change uh, dramatically. So Absolutely. I'm very positive. Yeah, um, my long term view is optimistic. I'm very optimistic. Yeah. These sort of dips will come because of the election we have in next year. Uh, I've believe and and i feel uh, it's a short term uh, of course long term view is optimistic um, uh, the uk is, is a small island uh, it's it's a, it, it's it's a developed country uh, there is a great shortage of uh, skill staff in the uk uh, a post brexit the europeans cannot even enter the uk as they used to before pre brexit mm -hmm. so we need uh, a skill staff in the uk that's the fact the businesses are suffering if you go to a restaurant, they are, they are closing down or probably they are not serving at their full capacity because they don't have staff, you know, yeah. chef. They don't have enough chef. They don't have a staff to serve uh, uh, people. And there is a huge crisis uh, if you look at the, uh, the UK businesses of, of skill shortage people. So that's the reality. And this is why we have a higher migration in last one year. Yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying. So I uh, go back to the audience. As you know, uh, most of my um, uh, people that watch these videos are either future international students or current international students or just recently graduate, maybe on the graduate route. So in your opinion, if someone is going to be switching to a skilled worker visa in the near future, um, do you think it will be harder for international students? Um, what is your projection considering the possible changes? Yes, thank you. Um, but my prediction is it will be harder for sure, post change, uh, where the government is changing the salary threshold. So the students as of now, uh, they can qualify under new entrance salary, uh, as most of you might be aware of, which is the lower side of the salary threshold, which is £20,960 or £10.75 uh, uh, pence per hour or 70% of going rate for the occupation court, which is in nutshell, it's a lower threshold, salary threshold, which likely to change post uh, 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 change in spring 2024, which might happen around March, April 2024. Um, so yes, it's likely to be difficult uh, to get a sponsorship with a genuine job role um, for students who is switching or graduate uh, root visa holders switching to skill worker visa. So same time, the ideal solution is uh, if they can get this uh, proced, proced, processed before the change come into place, that's that's the, the biggest recommendation I can give to your audience. Fast mm -hmm. track it, get it done before the change was to happen, you know, now, uh, before spring 2024, That that is what they should do. Uh, and uh, if not, then be ready to, to either find a job at a higher rate of salary and if they can't find it, I can't think of any other idea or solution for them unless they genuinely want to continue studying. And if they find it well, you continue studying in the UK unless they have any other visa route to switch into. Mm -hmm. Now, this makes sense. I've been also saying the same thing that, you know, if you're already graduated, it's your push, it's your kick to really sort out your career uh, beforehand. And I think that businesses are also aware of that and they might be pushing um to hire before because they quite um, reliant on foreign talent, as you said, yes. some of industries. Uh, the, I, uh, thank you for clarifying the new entrant rule again. I have um, read on Home Office blog that they did say that the salary discounts will still be there for new entrants to the market. Yes. They didn't clarify exactly what is this discount? Is it 1%? Is it 20? Is it 30? Uh, do you have any prediction, maybe, you know, based on your experience, will we have any of these discounts? 
and just obviously yeah. we will how it might look is there any hope that new entrant will will not change at all yeah no no i think so my prediction is again it's my best guess please don't hold yeah. me accountable for it uh my best guess is as a lawyer there will there will remain a new entrant salary discount uh but again you know it proportionately will change so if yeah. the salary threshold from 26 is moving to 38 uh yeah. Then, then proportionately, the the new entrance salary uh, goal spot will move up as well accordingly, right? So yeah. that that's what I'm my my thought is. Um, so it's around like forty six percent increase. Mm. So so twenty thousand into forty six percent might increase by around nine thousand. So probably new entrance salary threshold might increase to around twenty nine thousand pounds from twenty thousand roughly. Yeah, that, that's my prediction. I kind of support your prediction. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking 20,000 is too low in my opinion. Yeah. This is just my opinion for, you know, what is right for the UK in terms of graduates. I think the graduates should be getting more than 20,000. Uh, it is reasonable because, you know, if you invested in a bachelor's or master's degree, uh, especially if you've been on a graduate visa for two years and you can get some experience, you should be getting above 20,000 yeah. to... Um, uh, you know, just keep up with the market. Uh, even if it changes to, let's say, 30, like the worst prediction, I think yeah. that it's still reasonable. Obviously, yes. it means that international students will have to work even harder. It does mean that uh, maybe some roles will not be eligible. But at the same time, I think that um, it is very manageable. And a lot of my clients get this salary even before this changes and i hope that the market maybe will react obviously this is wishful thinking that all of a sudden uh people will be paid more but um uh <laughs> there is always hope um so a, a lot of uh, of my um uh, clients or people in the audience asking so if if for example this new uh, entrant or some kind of salary discount will still be there and people want to bring dependents um, does it mean that they can bring dependents on a lower discounted rate or if they will have to bring dependents, they still have to meet the 38,700? I know it's quite a technical question and perhaps you don't have all the information, but a lot of people are confused because as you can imagine, people are coming for masters or PhD programs with their families or they're just starting a family. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can answer that question. That's very easy. So if someone is on skill worker visa mm -hmm. already, uh, then for them to bring dependents, there is no salary requirement or salary threshold requirement. There is no, as of now, and I don't think uh, it will be applicable even in future. I don't think so. So if someone is on skilled worker visa, they should not worry about bringing their dependents because they can easily bring dependents with them um, mm -hmm. uh, if, if they're on skilled worker visa. As you know, graduate root visa, if you don't have dependent, you can't bring dependent as we speak as of now, unless you have that person as dependent with you on student visa. Mm -hmm. um, and that will probably continue uh, 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 there. From January 2024, of course, government is stopping uh, uh, students bringing dependents unless they are doing some PhD, et cetera, course. Mm -hmm. It will remain as, as a restriction. But to answer your question directly, highly unlikely there will be a salary threshold for skilled worker visa uh, holder to bring dependents to the UK. Right. So uh, if I understand correctly, as someone who is not an immigration lawyer, if you qualify for a skilled worker visa, you're kind of already meeting the, qualifica the qualification to bring a dependent. Absolutely. So uh, if someone, let's say, um, is a, does have some kind of discount applied to them for any reason, let's say, should they have a cheap occupation or something like that, then they can bring a dependent. Obviously, I have did read that one of the points is that care workers won't be able to bring. Exactly. Um, so, so post changes, which the government has recommended, then care worker cannot bring dependents. Apart from that, rest of the skilled worker category can bring the dependents, yes. You've already mentioned that um, if you already graduated, uh, it's really good to sort out uh, your visa as soon as possible. Let's say, could you just to walk me through how uh, AY and J solicitors helps potential clients, what services you offer, how can international students benefit from contacting um your ex team of experts as well as maybe a lot of people interested if it's not skilled worker visa what else is there 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, there are plenty of YouTube videos on my channel, uh, Valeria, uh, talking about the various options of immigration to the UK. I would highly recommend that they watch those videos, the audience, if they want to watch that. Uh, uh, the next option is, of course, there's a contact form on my website. If they fill out the contact form, one of my business relationship executive can reach out to the potential candidate, ask them what they're looking for, the potential client, what they're looking for, and if they, if we really can help them. If not, we'll tell them honestly and transparently that we can't help. And if they can provide some more information, they can do that uh, over a call at no extra cost. Um, if there is a more technical query, uh, which is legally challenging, then we invite them to book uh, an initial consultation with us at a cost. We charge £300 plus VAT for a consultation up to 60 minutes with a, a, a highly experienced lawyer. Uh, but that comes only if it's necessary. But if we mm -hmm. can provide some basic information, understand that's that's a free call, assessment call is free. Um, so I think ideally just drop an inquiry through a contact us form, which we have it on our website. Probably we can put that in a description section of, of the YouTube video yeah. so they can click that form and they can submit their inquiry. That's the best way to reach out to us. Um, we have a team of at least 40 people now in our business that includes literally everyone, uh, operation, sales, marketing. Um, it's it's a very well uh, structured. Uh, everybody works as a great team. So uh, we are here to help if if somebody needs help. Um, if not, skill worker visa. What else? You know, think, consider innovator visa. If you do qualify, your business has to be innovative, viable, mm -hmm. and scalable. Um, sales sponsorship route. Of course, I've been talking about very popular these days. Only if you can afford that requires a mm -hmm. uh, sizable investment uh, to be self-sponsored in the UK. Uh, do consider that if you genuinely have an idea or intention to run a genuine business in the UK, really, really good immigration route to run a business of yourself uh, with uh, on route to settlement for yourself and your family. Um, or else if you genuinely have an intention or desire to continue studying, you know, continue uh, on a student visa, if that was to make sense, if you are in a genuine relationship, of course, uh, mm -hmm. with someone who is uh, settled in the UK or, or British in the UK, of course, spouse visa could be the potential way forward. Um, these are the key routes I can think of. Yeah. Sometimes some people also qualify for ancestry visa, which they mm -hmm. probably don't know whether they do or do not. Something to explore. Yeah. Um, these are the routes quickly, you know, on top of my head. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. think of uh, for uh, international students or any migrant to think for. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing. Um, scale up visa with me and Yash did a video as well. Very uh, specific route, but um, some people do go for it. Um, in terms of, you know, opening your own business, innovator, self-sponsorship, a lot of people are scared about it. A lot of people are scared of it. And obviously I help these people from career perspective, but I know a lot of immigrants, they first start a business in their home country, they have savings, they come for masters and then they give up an idea, or let's say bachelors, usually masters, yeah. they give up an idea of continuing uh, their entrepreneurial journey. I don't, when, I don't want you to just be discouraged. There are legal immigration uh, ways to continue being an entrepreneur. And um, if this is really your passion, I really suggest uh, at least booking consultation and discussing how um, this can be explored. Yeah. Uh, because it's, I know people that got it, you don't have to be Elon Musk to qualify. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And and for the audience's benefit, I've shot around 26 videos on self sponsorship. You know, if someone has time to watch that playlist, that'd be a great start. You know, just just explore. Nothing, no obligation, yeah. no obligation. Yeah. Just just get the information. I just put out all the information I have in my head into the mm -hmm. video for the benefit of wider public at no cost. You know, that's my intention. Um, mm -hmm. I like in sharing my knowledge and experience and expertise as much as I can at no cost. And that's the way I can do it via YouTube video. So I've done that. Feel free to watch that videos as well if that helps. Thank you, Yash. I will link all those videos in the description. Uh, if you have time, I want to talk, talk about graduate visa again. Sure, um, yeah. Let's talk. I just wanted to ask you, a lot of people are concerned. And I want to say that in the home office blog, again, 
published uh, last week or 8th of December, I think, they did say it's not going to be cancelled. There is no panic. Uh, in 2012, when I was a student, it was cancelled. So we are still doing better, uh, despite what people are thinking that the UK is closing up. Um, what are your uh, thoughts on what can we expect? Do you think it will change the duration or is it just going to be harder to get a graduate visa? Oh, that's a tough one to predict, to be honest. Uh, you never know how this uh, political bandwagon might affect the, the immigrant community. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's sad. It's very sad uh, to see that immigrants are being used as a political football. Um, it's very sad to see that. But having said that, let's come back to your question. Uh, I cannot say for sure. Uh, it depends on what the Migration Advisory Committee is coming back with as a, as a recommendation. And of course, there is a lot of business interest as well, not to forget. There is a huge business interest of uh, encouraging uh, foreign students to the UK, uh, where they pay a huge amount of uh, international school fees that brings a huge economic benefit to the UK. So the universities are the biggest beneficiary of, of these economic benefits to start with. And of course, they, they will lobby to the government of not cancelling the graduate route visa. Of course, it's very enticing for uh, international students to join the UK course with a view of at least getting some uh, opportunity to work in the UK, if not two years, at least one year. So mm. there might, might be, I mean, the, my prediction is to answer your question directly, it might be reduced, let's say, from two years to one year. Mm. Um, that, that might be a possibility. Anyways, the dependents are not directly allowed, so it will yeah. remain the same most likely, but they might change uh, the, the duration from two years to one year, uh, potentially, or God knows, you know, they might scrap it all together, which is highly unlikely uh, yeah. based on the blogs you have read and I've read as well. So let's, let's, let's keep it as a best prediction as of now, and let's see what was to happen in spring 2024. So from career perspective, I've been saying you can't just wait to graduate and start thinking about your career. Graduate visa is a bonus. It's not a, a kind of um, a tool that you have to rely on. It's great to have, but there are ways to switch to skilled worker visa directly. I've done it. My clients have done it, and it's possible. And you have to be thinking long term. Even if you're coming for master's in the UK, uh, you have to have an intention. Why are you coming? What are your career goals? Where are you planning to work? Uh, and so on, because it's a big investment. Absolutely. Um, and it can be changed while you are in the UK. It can be scrapped at any time and you can't just rely on, on, on it completely all the time. A lot of people, when they hear short occupation list, it's a big keyword that people are concerned about. Uh, for some reason, um, for international students, I haven't been uh, so focusing on or telling my clients and audience to focus on shortage occupation list a lot because I feel that international students uh, are benefiting from the new entrant rule at the moment. Yeah. What is your view on the shortage occupation list? Should international students be worried that it's changing? Um, I think it's less likely to impact them because anyways, yeah. they are getting this salary discount as a new entrant. Um, so it's less likely to impact international students unless they are seeking job roles specifically into shortage occupations such as chef uh, or, or carer. Um, but anyways, the carer worker visa is not being affected anyways with the, the salary threshold change. Government has made it very clear. Um, mm -hmm. So it's unlikely to, to affect them. Um, yeah, that, that's my view. Valeria. Yeah. Um, the final question I wanted to ask you today is just being an immigrant yourself uh, in the UK and um, working with so many talented people throughout the years, helping them s settle in the UK. Um, do you think that people should be discouraged or should consider other countries if they want to work in the UK or study in the UK? I know you've said your view is optimistic, uh, but overall, a lot of people asking me, should they just not come to the UK now? Should they just look somewhere else? Um, do you have any advice for um, <laughs> this? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you for picking up this point. Um, and yeah, let me just share my story. So I came to UK in 2003 with uh, just a £1,500 borrowed money from my cousin as a student. I even did not have money to pay for my visa fees. And now, today in 2023, we are running... Uh, a, a multi award winning legal 500 uh, solicitors firm with 4000 plus client 1000 plus reviews on Trustpilot and Google very successful business very proud of that 
at that point of time, I had no other option but to figure it out, what do I do? Because I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. So Valeria, to answer your question, it's it's different, uh, different uh, way of looking at this from the different point of view, but for different people. So we don't know who is this audience who is listening to us today, right? Yeah. Their yeah. economic situation, their background might be completely different than where I came from and where I am now, right? There is a huge difference. I, I'm, I'm coming from here, but I'm here now. Right. So he said, and then today, if, if I if I, if I'm in this situation back 2003, I would think twice, twice. Is it right if I have a, you know, if I'm living a comfortable life, <laughs> do I yeah. really want to get into a country with uh, this sort of uncertainty? So then my decision will be different. But if I have nothing to lose and everything to gain, then my decision will be different. So the, the audience should, of course, think for themselves, what do they think is the right choice for them in their life and career? wherever they are in their life and career. And then, of course, look around for other opportunities, if there is any. If they, they should compare themselves and see what makes more sense for them. Um, if they just want to come and study, of course, UK is, is a good place to just study. But if they're expecting, oh, no, I need two years of graduate visa, less likely to happen for a year or two, unless the new government was to set in and change the rules again, which is likely. So if they're expecting, no, no, I definitely need two years of graduate visa, less likely to happen. Um, so if they're, they're, their intention and reliance is like, oh, if I get student visa, I must be able to work soon after I finish the course, then it's less likely to happen. So think about that. You know, uh, oh, I must find a sponsorship and a job. It will be a little bit difficult or more difficult than what it is now because the salary threshold is changing. The employer might not be able to afford uh, mm -hmm. all the cost and salary and the in increased immigration health surcharge, which is literally becoming double next year. So the cost is rising in terms of sponsoring people. So the employer might be discouraged. So think about all this, right? So, okay, in nutshell, if we just conclude this topic for international students, think from your point of view, where you are in your life, in your career, what's your background? Does that make sense to take that step ahead to come to the UK to earn that degree, does that make sense? If you just get one year of graduate visa, would that make commercial sense for you or economic sense for you or a career sense for you? If the answer comes like 80% yes, then you may want to do it. If the answer is no, don't do it. Um, and wait for the change sometime. You know, Sometimes they just want to wait for the change, which might happen in April 2024. So hold, some people, they want to just hold on to their plan till the changes was to be announced clearly. So, oh, this is the clear picture. Now I know. So there might be a slowdown from now, December 2023, till the changes was to come into place, uh, Valeria. Yeah. Well, Yash, I think this is really helpful. Even for me, you uh, said uh, your opinion. I completely agree with you. I think that um, there are so many factors to consider. There is no one single advice. Yeah. And um, just one thing that I wanted to add is that you can't just rely on perfect plan. Just always have a plan B. Don't come yeah. to the UK if the only reason is to stay there for full time and only in the UK, because there is so many things outside of our control, like immigration rules, sometimes family issues, personal issues. I've seen a lot of talented people that sometimes struggle. Uh, it's not all in your hands, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to, uh, to, to be. So you're always saying if, let's say you come to the UK or pay for your master's or take this huge loan, let's say, what else you can do with your degree? It shouldn't just be about settling in the UK as long as, of course, that can be your priority. Could you go to another country? Can you go back? What can you learn? What other things except the settlement you can get from coming to, to the UK? Uh, just experience, network, uh, education. Yeah. I want to add one last point for the yeah. audience benefit is whenever the government was to change rule, the transitional arrangement does apply. What it means is if you are under the current old rules, it will continue yeah. applying to you till you stay in the UK. So mm. this is an assurance for the audience who are probably getting panicked. So what will happen to me? What will happen to my future? I am under skilled worker visa. Would this salary test will apply to me? Less likely to change for you. Mm -hmm. So if you are under old rules, it will continue uh, uh, applying to you till you finish your current visa, whatever it might be. That's the norm we have in immigration rules. So please do not panic. The transitional arrangement does apply most of the time. 
Yeah, no, thank you so much, Yash. I'm sure we'll have more videos in the future in spring 2024 once we'll yeah. have the exact information. The audience, please stay patient, check your sources, uh, make sure you visit Yash's um, YouTube channel to explore more. Information is your weapon at the moment. Do your research, weigh out the benefits and costs for yourself personally. Uh, don't... Um, panic yet. Uh, we remain optimistic uh, and we're always going to be sharing hopefully good news with you. Um, and uh, again, Yash, thank you so much. As always, a pleasure. Thank you so much, Valeria, for inviting. Thank you.